welcome today and today is going to be the start of a new electronics project a nice and easy one to begin with and uh, it is to do with uh, joysticks actually retro joysticks so those of you who have a Commodore 64 or Amiga and they've got a joystick without a auto fire well you're gonna find this interesting now those of you who know me personally and also from my videos on my channel uh, you will know that I am an auto fire junkie and that is because in my nostalgia times <laughs> I tend to kind of you know every now and then fight the fact that uh, auto fire is not cheating and I still stand by that auto fire is not cheating <laughs> but um, yeah this zip stick here and also I'm a big fan of zip stick zip stick is my favorite one always has been always will be no matter what so <laughs> and um, this one actually it does not have an auto fire but this one i remember using on the lemon amiga competition when i was playing pacmania i got the highest score ever <laughs> uh, actually and uh, this has it needs re micro switching because it's completely literally com <laughs> loose so yeah definitely this is just taking the surface but today i'm gonna mostly concentrate on the auto fire circuit i'm gonna make one myself for this and have a switch that comes out here so yeah, let me show you the circuit. What I'm gonna do is uh, build this on the breadboard first, in this, and then in part two, I'm gonna do the ele actual electronics and fit it in. I also have all the components here. Um, I don't need that actually. Actually, I, I got these especially for it, but I ended up finding one, one <laughs> smaller one with latches in my um, collection. So yeah, I'll see if this is spare for something. So what you're basically doing with this circuit is just like, you know, it's oscillating. So all you're doing is just creating a signal that's like, as opposed to a signal, um, this is a button, fire button. Um, you know, it comes from the uh, DB9 connector and then, you know, goes here, you press fire and it just makes a contact the ground. And that is, you know, what tells your computer that you've just pressed fire. And uh, instead of actually going just here, uh, yeah, you connect this to pin 1, which, you know, when you're pressing fire, it activates it, it os starts oscillating, and then you get the on-off, on-off signal going here, you know, coming out of pin 3 into the DB9, telling your computer that you're switching it on and off, on and off, <laughs> lots of times. Uh, and this here, this 10k uh, variable resistor here, this adjusts the auto fire rate, or turbo fire rate, rapid fire rate, whatever the freak you call it. <laughs> So this adjusts that how you know how how fast you want the auto fire. So that's you know that's quite a nice feature. Uh, and yeah, besides that, this is just it's very simple. Actually, I've just noticed something here. I need you know this is a switch to actually switch between just going straight down like normal mode and then turning auto fire on, which is like you know instead of going straight there, it goes to pin one and comes. I need a two way switch, but I've only got like you know a one way button <laughs> latching switch okay so what i'm wondering here um you know since i got this switch is instead of having this two-way switch here i'm wondering if this will work and this is another way we can just test it uh, i'm wondering if we just put this straight connecting straight to this and this output it just goes here you know straight to that okay so yeah we connect the diode here to stop anything going from here um I'm not even sure if the diode is necessary or not, but we'll do it anyway. Um, so instead of the switch being here, we can just make a switch on the um, on here. So we just have here, to break that, make a switch here. And just to make it freaking clear, I'll liquid paper this part out so it's... I hate it when things are so scruffy. <laughs> I like my circuits, you know, as neat as can be. So we have here my nice lovely breadboard. Ooh, that feels good. <laughs> Anyway, um, we have that. Okay, I seem to explain this every single time I use a breadboard on my channel. <laughs> this, these connect like uh, in rows here. So you'll have this, all these are connected. So like this, there's a split here, of course, and this of course splits here. So it's like you get rows of horizontal connections here, here, here. These are the power, dra power rails. Uh, you connect uh, plus welds here from here, from these, you know, these things. Uh, then you connect another, make another connection to here if you want it here, uh, of the ground. Okay, so we can see the IC chip here. 
and uh, let's just put that in first thing uh, that's pin one and i'm just gonna do it as close to the, uh, the schematic as possible the circular so let's just kind of okay so pin one here goes to the joystick button i guess that we have uh, pin one let me just connect you know this uh, this entire row is connected so we just connect that in here and that just goes to the joystick that's it and the bottom one is just going from pin 3 to the DB9 connector. So we have pin 3 here. Yeah, and that's it. So those, so this part of the circuit is done. The part that's in and out. So we have, we want to connect the uh, pin 4 to the plus valves. So pin 4 goes to this rail, no, this rail here. That rail does not connect. This connects unless you bridge it. So pin 7 goes to ground. So here it is um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's connect it to seven, and then top one's eight. Uh, so seven goes to here, which is ground. Now, according to the circuit diagram, pin six goes to pin two. So let's do that. So then we have four, five, six. So six goes to pin two here. So one, two. Okay, that's fine. That's the only thing that connects to pin two. Pin five connects to nothing. Um, pin seven connects to ground. Actually, no, hold on. There's a capacitor between ground. So positive side of the capacitor goes to pin seven, and negative side goes to ground. So we just put the capacitor in there, and there you go, you have it. So we've just connected this capacitor, ground here, capacitor here, to pin 7. But pin 6 also connects to a resistor, which connects to that same ground. So let's do that. Okay, so pin 6 uh, goes to, with the resistor, you connect this to pin 7. So it's just the one next to it. Okay, so pin 8 here goes to plus volts also. Uh, and then goes into you know variable resistor. Okay, so let's connect this to the plus valve, and then we'll connect it to the variable resistor. Other side of the variable resistor goes to ground, like this. Uh, well, this capacitor, and then the capacitor goes to ground. Okay, so this arrow here, uh, which goes into the center of this resistor, that is the fader or the wiper, whichever one you call it. That is that top pin here. That you can see here, that's the variable resistor. That is the top pin, the one that it's on its own. Um, either side of this resistor are these two pins, this and that. So the wiper connects to you know one of these. So it connects to the one which goes to the ground. So we want the short one wiper to that. Okay, so that's in there. We couldn't put it the other way. So we'll just get like a short wire here. Just short the wiper with one of the ends. Okay, this is a 20k uh, resistor. I couldn't find a 10k, so it's a 20k, but it shouldn't be, you know, much of a difference. It should be fine. So we see here the wiper, which is connected to the one end of the resistor, that goes to the capacitor, right? And the other part goes to pin 8. You cannot see this, so let's just make it yellow. The shorted one next to it goes to the capacitor, which is pin 7. It's there, and then you have the one which goes to pin eight, and then we're done. You have the other end here, yes. And now we'll go to pin eight, and pin eight here, if you remember, also goes to um, plus valves. So pin eight, and right next to it, we just take that under the plus valve rail, and that's it. That's fine. So we've got our circuit built here, and uh, it's actually not that hard. I mean, it looks it looks more complicated than it is, but it's not. Rest assured. What we need to do is just open this thing up and test it. I have my joystick tester here, which um, you know I made. If you want to see the making of this joystick tester, then the video is linked in the description below or the letter I in the top corner. strange it's got a yellow shot which is you know the other one's got black this so the DB9 is this orange wire 
here. So we need to disconnect the DB9 from the um, the fire buttons. So we just like pull this out like that. Okay, jumper wires. <coughs> we connect the uh, the DB9 here. We connect that to the um, pin three, the part which actually goes to the DB9, and this is the part which connects to the button itself. Okay, so we've connected this, which is that orange one, this here, and we've now connected that uh, to the sorry this part to the button, and the other side of the button goes to the ground, which is that's fine. Now all we need to do is just connect this to the power supply. The um, okay, so the ground which comes straight from the DB9 connector, clamp this there, and then connect that under the circuit here, like that. Then we take the positive here. Okay, so we've come across a little bit of an issue here. Now this um, joystick here. Uh, it's as I said at the beginning it does not have an auto fire circuit now there is no need for a plus belt to be there you know all you need is each of the um, you know buttons to correspond to the, the pins and the DB9 connector okay so after like a half an hour of just messing around with this opening this out checking everything um, the, the Auto fire circuit in this, or the turbo fire circuit in this, it's different. It doesn't, for some reason, it's not needing a plus felt. I don't know why, it's just two transistors and uh, resistors. So I have no idea how the freak that's working. Uh, this auto fire circuit needs a plus 5 volts. Now, they have omitted in the wire, in the cable, they have omitted the um, plus 5 volts. There is no, you know, pin. This is supposed to be plus plus five volts here. There's literally no pin here. There's no connection. Sorry, uh, that's ground. There's a connection there. There's a connection here. Here. Okay. So now this one here is fire button B. Now why they didn't standardize that in the Amiga and and the Commodore 64, I have no idea. Because there's some games that do use button B. Plans have slightly changed. It's still, it's still happening. I'm not cancelling this, uh, but plans have slightly changed. What I have uh, before, you know, any plans or anything like this, I have made amendments to the circuit because, um, first of all, that diode, we don't need it because it just didn't work out. Um, there's another way to do it, which is simpler. I should have done it before, like this. Because okay, so all we need to do now is just get rid of the diode okay connect that again and the only thing we need just the freaking switch here i should leave this to dry <laughs> it's not dried yet and all you need to do is just short that and it's just normal fire that's it if you open that then it goes through this and it's auto fire i'll demonstrate okay so this auto fire circuit here needs a plus five volts yeah, now there is no plus 5 volts here, unfortunately. Um, so, just for testing purposes, let's use an external power supply. And you can have to join the ground of the external power, power supply to this ground as well, you know, so that it, everything works out. So, let's turn that on and set it to 5 volts. We've just connected this part here, this part to pin 3. Now we just need to connect uh, pin 1 to the button itself, which connects the ground. Okay, now this switch here, uh, we'll just have to short these out. So this and this, you know, if we short these two out, so that is just normal. That's auto fire turned off. As you can see here, auto fire works. Now we have auto fire on, so that entire circuit's not shorted out. Um, then we just connect this to the um, the external power supply, just to power the, the chip, the triple five timer, and we have the ground from the power supply connected to ground here. So you can see that, can you? That's the auto fire working, and that does not seem stable on camera, but it's stable in real. Okay, so you can change the rate of auto fire here. 
can see. Which is fantastic. That looks really slow on camera, but it's not. It's actually going very fast. It's just that it cannot capture. It's struggling it. That is fantastic. Okay, I do like this circuit. We've established we need a freaking plus five volts, which does not exist in this joystick, um, nor does it in the actual one with the order fire. Uh, so this is using another type of circuit. I'm still gonna go ahead with this one, this triple five dimer one um, for this series. And um, what I'm gonna do is for now, I'm not gonna uh, modify this zip stick. Now what I'm going to modify is this cruiser. Now this does not freaking have auto fire and I'm an auto fire junkie. So <laughs> what I'm going to have to do here is replace the actual, because this has got the same issue. You know, if you look at this, there is no plus five volts here, you know, of course. So what I'm going to have to do, I have some um, multi-core wire here. A multi-core cable, sorry. Um, how many cores do you have, dude? Please tell me how many cores you have. I bought some extra because I do have a future project, you know, with joysticks. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Okay. And I've got some DB9 connectors here, um, plugs here. So what I can do is I can make my own DB9, you know, connector with all nine pins. Well, I don't need all nine pins, but I can make a new cable for this here you know with grip and all and uh, I can have this fire button in here yeah that's what I'm gonna do in part two so part one we have built this and we have a working um, you know as you can see here we have a working auto fire now again you short the outputs to make it just turn into a normal fire yeah fantastico now for a future project, what I'm going to do is actually um, open this out, look at the auto fire circuitry and reverse engineer that because I've got no freaking clue how it works. I'm going to, you know, make the circuit diagram out of it and then, you know, try and make another one for this, um, what do you call it, this zip stick, which does not have, you know, an auto fire. But yeah, this uh, triple five timer is going to be for the cruiser. Now this here is the revised circuit. It's gone through <laughs> three, uh, two changes uh, since the beginning of this video. <laughs> but hey, that's how we do it. We live and learn, right? So yeah, for now we have this. And uh, yes, do subscribe because part two is going to, uh, you know, come up. The part two, the build of this is going to be next week, hopefully. So yeah. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. <laughs> for their generous donations and great support, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons, Alhand, Andrea, Anthony Proctor, Boris Matishin, Brad Hansen, Cameron Armstrong, Carrie S. Turner, Karsten Lervad, Casual Commodore, Counting Virtual Sheep, Electronscape UK, Eric Andre, Esmond Gulbeck, Gav Messingham, Jeffrey Major, Hayes Maker, James Burr, James Herr, Jan Beta, Jason Cadaver, Jim Leonard, Jos A.D., Mark Morin, Mark McDonald, Matthew, Matt Shepkar, Matthew Simpson, Mickey Holm, Obraxis, Patrick Ekman, Peter Lingbeck, Ranzi, Risky Flyer, Robert Minnis, Rafi Oderstein, Roy Gelotti, Rudiger Stiedel, Steve Jones, Sophie Leroy, Stuart Evans, Thomas Presina, Thomas Muller, The Deep Slice. <laughs> the deeply cynical as Tina Stormcaller and Wayne Marsh. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon's websites or YouTube channels.